Well, on uh, ISIL, uh, you all know what President Obama has said. He's made it very clear. ISIL is a threat to uh, a civilized world, uh, to certainly to the United States, to our interests, as to uh, how the United States uh, is responding to that threat uh, in uh, Iraq. Uh, the President has also uh, made it clear we're going to continue to uh, support uh, the Iraqi security forces uh, in, uh, in every way that uh, uh, we can. There have been sickening and shocking reports from Iraq. The terrorist group ISIS, also known as ISIL, is beheading children, burying people alive. Obama couldn't pull U.S. troops out of Iraq fast enough for his own political reasons, but now he's scrambling to kick out the terrorists who have filled the void. Some Iraqis are even trying to get into war and tour in Syria just to get away. The U.S. is now arming Kurdish forces, but only after thousands have been slaughtered and only with small arms. The world is coming apart while Obama goes golfing for literally the 180th time in his presidency. Well, J.D. Gordon is a former Pentagon spokesperson, and he joins us with more from Washington. I think this is a complete civilizational disaster, literally in the cradle of civilization. The U.S. had that place battened down at a high cost of blood and treasure, Obama just vamoosed as quick as he could, and it's all falling apart. Am I oversimplifying, J.D.? No, Ezra, it's very complex, but the bottom line is that President Obama abandoned Iraq in 2011, and that uh, allowed this security vacuum to happen, and it allowed ISIS, a terrorist group that's an offshoot of al-Qaeda, to take over a third of Iraq. So I'm glad that the president is arming the Kurds, even though it's only small uh, um, small arms, if you will, and also ammunition at this point, but it's better late than never. I think that uh, this arming of the Kurds, even though it's uh, minor in scope, it could prevent a humanitarian catastrophe against the Christians, the Kurds, and the Yazidis. Huh. Uh, now, I, I want to ask you about some of the technical attacks. So you talk about arming the Peshmerga, which is the Kurdish militias, if I understand correctly. Now, there have been a few pinpoint attacks on ISIS that were going after this ancient sect called the Yazidis. Were these just drone attacks from the air? Like, I, I have to wonder, if you don't have soldiers on the ground, how can you even think you're stopping terrorists in a place like Iraq where they're not wearing uniforms, they often don't drive formal military vehicles? It could be some guys in a, in a pickup truck that are terrorists. They could just be, you know, f regular folks, I guess. If you don't have people on the ground, can drones and aircraft shot missiles even stop ISIL? Ezra, you're right. I don't think they can stop ISIS. I think they could slow their advance and they could stop them from taking over Erbil or attacking Erbil directly. Most of the attacks have been from F-18s flying from the George H.W. Bush, an aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. The F-18s have been dropping 500-pound laser-guided bombs on uh, convoys and on some of the missiles that ISIS has. You know, it's ironic, too, because ISIS has a lot of their heavy weaponry from the Iraqi army, which was supplied by the U.S. So once the Iraqi army abandoned their posts, ISIS captured those weapons. So ironically, we're bombing a lot of the U.S. weapons that we supplied to the Iraqi army. That is so bizarre and so sad. You know, I keep pointing out to people that the United States still has military bases in Japan, Germany, Korea, even though those wars ended 60, 70 years ago, just to help maintain the peace and to make sure America didn't have to refight any wars there. It was so hasty, the exit. Do you think that this sort of Band-Aid approach, a Band-Aid in Kurdistan, a Band-Aid for the Yazidis, Band-Aids here and there, do you think that can really stop a terrorist force that has conquered a third of Iraq, two-thirds of Iraq in mere weeks? No, Ezra, I don't. This has all been a Band-Aid, but if you look back to 1990, Four U.S. presidents have launched military operations in Iraq. They've all been a, a form of a Band-Aid, whether it was George H.W. Bush to push him out of Kuwait, President Clinton bombing him to protect the Kurds in the north and the Shia in the south, President George W. Bush to, to remove Saddam Hussein and his threat to the international community, and now Barack Obama bombing ISIS. Four U.S. presidents for over 20 years have been essentially bombing Iraq. So I think that it was very uh, uh, politically opportunistic of President Obama back in 2002 who made his political career out of calling Iraq a dumb war. Hmm. Well, Mr. President, is it so dumb right now, now that he's bombing it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's bizarre. And, of course, the, all the arguments that he used against the war the first time could be brought against him now, I don't seek to do that because I think there are times when America has to exert its force and national interest around the world. How does, it, how does this look to different countries and interest groups in the region? I mean, it, it must look so pitifully weak 
to everyone who's trying to take America's measure, either as America as a friend or as a foe. I mean, if you're, I think I would be a lot more scared of America the friend than America the foe. I would be laughing at America the foe if I was Bashar Assad or Iran. I would be desperate if I was Saudi Arabia, Israel, or the, or the Gulf states. What's your take on that? Well, I think uh, Iran's encouraged because uh, they see us going to bat for them, essentially, uh, because the Iraqi government in Baghdad is backed by Iran because uh, they're both Shia-led. And so Iran thinks it's, it's great in that way that we're doing the heavy lifting for them. Uh, Russia thinks it's great because we're doing the li heavy lifting for them, too, because these radical Islamists are the same ones that are fighting Bashar al-Assad, their ally in Syria. And I think our European allies just think the United States is weak and indecisive under President Obama. They asked for him in Europe. They loved him. And, and look what they got. But I think, Ezra, this isn't going to be uh, solved until this proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Iran uh, uh, exports this radical version of Shia Islam since 1979, since the revolution. The Saudis have tried to kept, uh, keep pace with them by exporting Wahhabism. Since the same time, the Saudis have spent over $100 billion, them and the Qataris, Kuwaitis, on exporting their version of radical Islam. Until those two radical versions of Islam are stopped, it's all just going to be a series of band-aids. We're never going to get rid of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Hezbollah, Hamas, until that radical Islam is stopped. And we've got a Wahhabi mosque in Montreal that Justin Trudeau likes to visit. But that's a story for another day. J.D., great to have you on the show. Thanks for bringing the bad news. It's important that we hear a statement.